Namaste everybody. Namaste. As you can see, um, we are live and I'm pretty excited to be here. But just uh, before we start, I would like to remind you that I am sending on a link right now. Just go there and register because we are uh, doing this live event in uh, partnership with uh, an organization called Dana. And Dana is a very, very beautiful and heartful initiative by my friend Bhaskar Goswami. And it's a paid forward uh, model um, charity or initiative. So if you could register and contribute on the link there, I'm sure Bhaskar will be available to answer some questions um, simultaneously if you have some questions or later. Um, so let's get started. Let's get started. All right. So nice to see you all. Um, technology is not my forte. But uh, yes, Vaskar, we are on. Dana is here. So you can um, link with Dana on how to go about uh, paying it forward and uh, other technical stuff. So let's get our conversation on. Before we begin, uh, I'm very, very thankful for those of you who plan to be here, who uh, took some time to join us. It's a global gathering and I'm really, really amazed by the technology and the privileges of technology that we have, some of us, not all, um, with which we can share, with which we can uh, interact on such a wide, scale. So, uh, well, sometimes I say this to the students that a uh, few thousand years ago or even a few hundred years ago, um, inspiring spiritual talks were given from a top of a mountain uh, to get a wider reach of people or audience. But now we have to be on the top of the technology mountain to reach to many more people. So here we are. Uh, I will start by chanting Om and the Guru Mantra. That's the way I begin with all my interactions. So just give me a moment if you want to join. We'll sing the Om first and then get on with the Guru Mantra. Om. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Okay. Now the, I told you that I start all my classes and my retreats and my seminars with this Guru Mantra. And the reason I start with the Guru Mantra is because it's an invocation to uh, salute the principle of guidance or the Guru principle uh, that is such an important part of the spiritual tradition and the yogic tradition in India. Uh, the reason is whatever we as modern yoga teachers or modern yoga seekers are experiencing in today's day and age has not come out of somebody's business model, neither has it sprouted out of somebody's um, genius five years ago or 10 years ago or 15, 20, even 100 years ago. What we practice under the whole umbrella of yoga in today's day and age comes from a living tradition which is thousands of years old. 
and in this living tradition living tradition because this tradition is still alive and that's why we're practicing what we do uh, this tradition believes in humbly and sincerely passing on the knowledge uh, of self-transformation from the authority or the teacher or the guru to the student and in this succession the knowledge gets passed on and on and on and uh, through this passing of the baton the knowledge has come to us after thousands of years so as a yoga educator or a yoga teacher or even as a yoga seeker and a practitioner i feel for me at least and that's what i teach my students it is important to just remind myself of the tradition that yoga comes from and feel thankful and feel grateful for um, being in this tradition of yoga teachers, yoga seekers, and passing on the wisdom, the beautiful inspirations that yoga has given to thousands and millions of seekers through the history and even today all right so that was the reason uh, why i like to invoke the guru principle guru not in the sense of some personality but the way guru is understood is the guru is a principle and not a personality so the real guru is accessible only when you can move beyond the name the form the name and form are important for bhakti for devotion for emotion for communication for inspiration but the real guru is the guru principle tattva guru tattva as it is called in sanskrit and the yogic philosophy great so good morning veena sethi she is uh, live from uh, bangkok so as you can see i'm sitting in canada my dear student veena sethi is in uh, bangkok so space and time has collapsed in our union today in our meeting today so i'm um, very excited for it so the topic for today as you can see there is effortless excellence the fundamental premise of yoga so if you have anything to share anything to say anything to ask in the purview of this topic um, let's start our conversation hello rona rona says hi from israel so wow it's a beautiful gathering today okay so i will start by taking us over what what this topic really is about because the topic like excellence and terms like excellence and uh, things like that uh, yes hello jed um, they feel very um, corporatized but if you really look at it no it's not about the first sutra i'm just going to talk and whatever sutra or whatever comes out i don't know so i'm not i'm not uh, i'm not i'm just going spontaneous all right rona so excellence as we know is quality of being outstanding as something so the way i understand excellence is it's a qualitative thing excellence has nothing to do with quantity excellence is about quality excellence is more intangible concept than a tangible concept and if we see in today's day and age if we look at the corporate world or the scholastic world or the athletic world 
or commercial economic world, excellence is described as being good at something by defeating others. Usually, excellence, this particular term excellence, has a comparative degree, which is okay. But that comparative degree is in response to others. For example, wow, you are an excellent singer. That's because the other singers are perhaps not as good as you. All right. So he is an excellent student because all other students did not fare as good as him in the exams. Now, from the spiritual yogic point of view, this concept of excellence has to be interpreted in a slightly different way because it is this very attitude of trying to be better than others, trying to defeat others, trying to go one up on others, this very attitude that is a part of our education system has created a generation or perhaps a few generations that cannot work together, that cannot uh, work like a community or very rarely. We are educated in a science or in scholastics that give high preference to excelling above others. And that's why many students, when they grow up and become professionals, have a hard time uh, coming together with others and working towards something. Um, everybody wants to supersede the other to show how good they are. This is perhaps okay in the commercial, in the practical, economic, uh, industrial world, but in spirituality, if you bring this attitude, um, it will be self-defeating. So how do I look at excellence? In, in my understanding, whatever little I know, the excellence that I look at is bettering over myself, being a better me over the day, over the month, over the year, over a decade. How can I be a better version of me? And that better version of me doesn't make the earlier version of me bad. This is something we all need to understand that just because I have bettered myself doesn't mean the earlier me was a bad me. All of us, again, have been conditioned to put everything in boxes, good, bad, and that's it. If you're not good, you're bad. If you're not bad, you're good. We have to step out and step back from putting everything in the silos of good and bad. There are lots of gray areas there. And that's why I feel that excellence for me in the spiritual yogic sense is nothing but bettering myself. Bettering myself. Uh, <laughs> perhaps uh, that's why Patanjali, uh, I like one word in Patanjali's Yoga Sutra that he mentions, is the Swa Swami. Swa Swami means Swa Swami. S V A S W A M I. I think it's chapter 2, verse 23. Uh, Swa Swami means self mastery. And this somewhere I feel is the essence of yoga. The essence of yoga is mastering yourself and not having a mastery over others. No, that's not 
what the original traditional yoga philosophy is about. Take any aspect of yoga philosophy, not just the Yoga Sutra. Yoga Sutra just talks about excelling at being yourself. And that's why the end point of Yoga Sutra is becoming Purusha or realizing, not even becoming technically, realizing the Purusha within by getting yourself out of the, of the masks, so to say, of Prakriti that keep you in the lower excellence of you. Or if you see the whole philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, the whole philosophy of Bhagavad Gita is also about reaching a calmer, a more peaceful state of mind. Uh, I think in chapter number six, uh, somewhere I think in verse number 27, shloka number 27 of chapter six, it's a beautiful chapter. I highly recommend all yoga seekers to uh, reflect on that chapter, chapter six. In chapter six, Krishna says that after mastering yourself, the seeker reaches a very peaceful and calm state of mind. Prashantasya manasa. That's the word that Krishna uses. So what are we looking at in yoga philosophy? If you really look at the whole premise of yoga philosophy, yoga philosophy is a philosophy of bettering yourself till you become the true you, the true self, as Patanjali would call it, the Swarup, the true version of you. So now we have this fight, this, we have this incongruency between two aspects here. As a practical people, we have all grown up on the narrative of being better than others by defeating others with a competitive, um, having a competitive edge. The, these are the terms that are used in practical corporate world, right? What's your competitive edge? So everything is looked at from the point of view of being better than the other. Now this view or this orientation needs to, to be changed when we talk about spirituality or when we speak in the context of yoga. Yoga is not about being better than the other. Yoga is about being better and being you. And that's why I want to emphasize on the fact that yoga, as it is understood in the traditional sense, is a science, a philosophy, a methodology of self transformation and self transcendence. Transcendence means going beyond, going beyond all the selves. So my own version, uh, my Prasad 2016 was a better self than Prasad of 2015. Prasad of 2017 was a better of Prasad of 2016 and Prasad of 2018 better be hopefully better than the Prasad of 2017. So the philosophy of yoga, as I understand, and I have given you the scriptural references for it, is a beautiful philosophy which brings us back to self-development, self-transformation, and being better 
at yourself, whatever it may be. It may be a practical skill. It may be a spiritual skill. It may be any kind of practice. Uh, I feel if you look at spirituality in the proper sense, it will make you a better person. It will make you a better human. It will make you a better individual. It will make you a better citizen. It will make you a better father. It will make you a better mother. It will make you a better parent. It will make you a better employee. It will make you better and better and better and better and better. Then who? Better than you yourself. This, I feel, is the primary message of yoga. Being better and being yourself. This, uh, this kind of orientation is called Ekagra. Ekagra means, Ekagra means one pointed or singly directed movement. And what is that one point? That one point is not out there from yogic sense. That one point is you. That one single point is you. It reminds me of a line of a saint that I highly regard and respect, Saint Nyaneshwar, Sant Nyaneshwar from Maharashtra, from India, in the western part of India. And he says, Eka Tattva Nama Dhrida Dhari Mana means be one pointed through your practice. Be one pointed through your practice. And remember that one point, that single minded point, is not out there in spirituality and yoga. That one point is you. You in the body, you in the mind, you in the breath, you as a citizen, you as a relation, you as whatever it may be, but you as you. Hope. This is clear because once you understand this fact that yoga is about you, yoga is about bettering yourself. If you understand this fact that yoga is about the self and that self is not out there, that self is you, that self is not in a class, that self is with you, that self is not uh, in some kind of posture, that self is you, only then you will start focusing on bettering yourself. Not bettering yourself because others are better than you, but bettering yourself because the only, bettering yourself is the only way. So I hope uh, that makes it clear. Uh, if you have any questions, till then, you may ask. Uh, Rona is saying, Swaswami is like self-control. Uh, well, you can say that. But the word Swami literally means mastery or Swamitva means mastery or Swami means a master. So when Patanjali talks about Swaswami, he's actually saying that one cannot really master oneself or be the best of oneself unless and until we resolve our mind. Because it's the mind that is keeping us in the unexcellent self, the non-excellent self. Perhaps the mind is like the iPhone 10, but still working on a five-year-old iOS. I don't even know if that, that will work on that phone, but we need to work on bettering ourselves. And the reason I'm saying this again and again, and I, I say this usually in my workshops, is that through yoga, the attention, the energy, and the intention, remember, the attention, the energy, and intention should come inward, not go outward. You are you not because of others, you are you because you are. That's it. 
All right. So uh, thank you, Yunyun. Hello, Beverly. Uh, hello, Evelyn. Uh, so hope that is clear because uh, decades of education makes us and our mind conditioned. Uh, and if we are aware and we are attentive, that conditioning will uh, and can be worked upon. All right. The second part is excellence. The first part was excellence. The second part is effortless. Now, if something like yoga is about bettering yourself at every step of the way over a period of time, that means yoga is a process. That means bettering yourself or creating excellence, or you can say self-excellence, is a process. And process takes time. Remember, process takes time. A beautiful process of human conception and human birth takes a specific period of time. You cannot rush that process. If you if you're patient, if you're longing, and if you're really, really uh, excited about the child coming into the world, then you have to be really patient um, and allow the process to unfold. Process is like flowering. We are all like little tiny buds. We cannot tear open the petals just because we want to flower. Remember that because today in the world of yoga or spirituality somewhere the competitiveness has creeped in and we all want to rush um, to find a peaceful state of mind. Well to a certain extent I can understand that we are all so tired of the mind, so tired and pestered by the limiting notions that we have about ourselves that we don't want to be in that state anymore but remember yoga is a process it's gonna take its time and we better be patient and that's why my first tip for all of us to create the self-excellence through yoga is understand that yoga is a process and just like any process, it takes time. And if it takes time, we have to be patient. So be patient. Again, we are at odds with the narrative of the world. We have all grown on the fact that we have to achieve a lot in a specific amount of time. We don't have to buy into this narrative. Or if you want to go along with this narrative, see to it that you at least get some time to come out of it. Just like you take off your work clothes when you come home and wear your home clothes, something more comfortable. Same way, these attitudes, these uh, perspectives need to be so adaptable that you are able to remove a certain attitude and keep it away. That's why we need to stop rushing because there are some things that will only happen when the time is right. There are some things will take their own time. We cannot rush. Be patient, especially with yourself. Because what happens is, we are so dissatisfied within. We are all trying to fill up that inner vacuum of separation from ourselves. That out of that anxiety, we raise the bar too high for ourselves. So high for ourselves. We are so ambitious. We raise the bar so high for ourselves that uh, We, we are not able to reach it. 
it's like a very very crooked self sabotage a cycle of self sabotage that we keep spinning ourselves into so be patient understand that your self excellence is a process and process takes time <clears throat> even patanjali talks about it now that i'm remembering i don't know the exact words but after uh, the sutra of asana he talks about prayatna shaithilya ananta samapatti bhya so he says prayatna shaithilya prayatna means effort trying hard literally prayatna means trying hard shaithilya means literally to let loose to relax actually to let loose that would be the right connotation uh, sanskrit is a very very contextual language and to interpret something in sanskrit you have to know the the perhaps the culture and also the context behind it so coming back to our point the prayatna shaithilya that patanjali talks about in asana and not just asana later on also patanjali says you better relax your go getting trying hard uh, alpha type a attitude if you don't do that the ananta samapatti bhyam will not happen so patanjali says relax your attitude take it easy don't try too hard be patient with yourself only when you do that ananta samata patti bhyam will happen means you will merge with the infinity so if you really really get the scriptures not just read them if you really reflect upon them they are all asking us the yoga the scriptures the mystics saints of yoga are asking us to take it easy take it easy not in the sense of lethargy not in the sense of laziness not in the sense of sloth but taking it easy why taking it easy with a deep understanding that what i have involved myself into through yoga is a process and it's going to take time so no forcing no pushing that you do is going to help or uh, expedite the process of your self excellence take it easy kabir if you read uh if you read uh, the works of kabir i would highly regard uh, i would highly recommend the works of poet saint kabir and kabir has written many beautiful notes on this topic easiness slowing down spontaneity he says dheere dheere re mana dheere sab kuch ho he says slowly slowly gradually everything falls into place so it's not just the scriptures but also the mystic saints of yoga who have excelled at being themselves also recommend this to us so uh, just to summarize it's almost 35 minutes uh, just to summarize what we spoke about we we spoke that yoga is a living tradition and uh, we all as yoga teachers need to be humble and grateful uh, for what we have received through this living tradition then we saw what excellence really means and we found out that excellence is a quality of being good at some skill or something else so excellence is a qualitative thing and not a quantitative thing 
But we also saw that we all, our generation, and perhaps the generation before us, has grown up on this narrative that excellence means being better than the others. That's the practical domain. But I feel that in spiritual domain, excellence is not about being better than the others. Excellence is being better than yourself. Yoga as a spiritual science has always been a spiritual science of being better than the earlier you. Well, then again, we have to remind ourselves that just because I'm better than what I was last year, that doesn't make a me, the earlier me, bad or sinful or evil. That's just a part of me that was. Today I'm a part of me that I am. And that's how the cycle has to roll. If you read Bhagavad Gita chapter 3, Krishna talks about the yadnya, the yadnya, the inner yadnya or the outer yadnya. Yadnya means a cyclic frame of reference. And Krishna says, everything works in a cycle. So our process of self-transformation is also a cyclic process. You give yourself to the process and you gain empowerment. Then we saw that yoga is about self-excellence. Yoga is not about being better than the others. Yoga is being better than the earlier you. And that's why the focus of yoga is you, you yourself. The focus of yoga is not others. The focus of yoga is not the, the other. The focus of yoga is you. Every individual working on themselves not alone necessarily, working together. It's like a rowing race. You know, in the Olympics, they have a rowing race. And all the team members are top athletes, like any other, perhaps, a group sport. Each athlete is excellent at what he or she does. And together, if they all function in their own excellence, together they allow the team to win. Same way, if we all focus on our own excellence, our family will be excellent, our society will be excellent, our country will be excellent, and the whole humanity will be excellent. And that excellence will not come as a comparative degree, that excellence will come out inside out, not outside in. So remember that, don't fall prey to this narrative unless and until required that you are excellent just because no one else is as good as you. No, we have to change it. And the earlier, the better. For this, the attention, awareness needs to come inward because then you yourself become the goal and you yourself become the destiny. Now, if we have to work on ourselves through transformation, we have to realize that we have to be patient because self-transformation or the whole process of self-excellence is a process and the process takes its time. And if we rush into the process, we are going to delay or disrupt the process. So point number one, tip number one was be patient and be good to yourself. Be effortless. Try not to rush things. Slow down. All right. So we'll continue this conversation. If you have any questions, you can write in the comment section. Um, it's great to see all of you from around the world. Um, I know almost all of you, so hello, thanks for coming on this platform. Uh, as uh, many of you know, I am, uh, I'll be not online, I'll be away. So this is my 
uh, last conversation for some time for now. Um, so Lynn says, I open my heart and mind that I understand self and can slowly move forward. Yes, slowly and forward are beautiful um, variables, right? So now I go to the next point, <laughs> effortless. How to make the process of yoga effortless, right? Because we all want to get out of our limited mind. We all don't want to suffer. We all had have had enough of this suffering and sadness and living in hypocrisy uh, and wearing masks just to please others and get their validation and love or whatever. So how do we do it? Well, the first part, as we all discussed already, was realizing that it's a process and being patient. The second part is a little deeper. The second part is generating trust. Now, this is a very, very interesting and important point. Have you realized that when you trust something or someone, the mind is relaxed. I'll give you an example. All of us have a deep ingrained insecurity. And our mind is hyperactive. So on one end, we all suffer from deep insecurity. On the other end, the mind is hyperactive. And the hyperactive mind cannot see clearly. The hyperactive mind always gives us multiple options. The hyperactive mind will always present multiple uh, scenarios. And that makes our mind go confused. And when we are confused, the insecurities increases. Our mind does not like ambiguity. And when our mind is faced by or faced with ambiguity, a sympathetic or nervous response is generated. Now imagine you are having this anxiety, a feeling of nervousness, fear, anxiety, insecurity, this wave and wave of fear coming up and then somebody that you deeply trust somebody that you uh, have faith in comes from the other side holds your hand looks into your eye and says don't worry it will all be okay and gives you a very nice reassuring hug what happens within a couple of seconds you feel better, you feel assured. This is the power of faith, this is the power of trust. And somewhere I feel, since our process of self-excellence is long, since our process of self-transformation is going to take some amazing amount of um, temporal journey, I believe we need to gradually generate Trust. Trust in what? Trust in three things. Trust in God or the functioning of the universe. Trust in the guide or the guru or the teacher. And third, the trust in yourself. Remember, trust in God, universe, or people on the path of yoga. The trust in the process of yoga. Number two, trust in the guru or the guide, the mediator, the facilitator of the process. And the third, trust in yourself. Whatever comes easy, start with that. Whatever uh, is closest to your heart, start with that. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in uh, universal functioning, but you have a guide, you have a guru, trust the guru and go with it. If you don't have a guru or you don't trust the guru, 
trust yourself. If you don't trust yourself, you don't have a guru, but were, have some faith in the universal working, uh, go with it. Whatever it is, you have to start with one of the three. Now, Dana is asking, what is the difference between trust, faith, hope, and belief? Trust and faith are usually interchange it. There might be a slight difference. Why I will tell you, the moment I say faith, people think of it as something religious. So sometimes I use the word trust. So I interchange the word trust and faith. For me, trust and faith are mostly the same, but I would say faith in something and trust is an inner quality. But for our conversation today, there's not much of a difference. Hope and belief, hope somewhere I feel has a little um, a part of desire to it, which is okay. Remember, I'm not here to say what is good and what is bad. It is a personal choice. For me, hope comes from a certain feeling of realizing that I don't have something, which is a fantastic quality to have as a spiritual seeker. Hope is something that the bhakti yogis work with because bhakti, people who practice bhakti or um, the bhaktas as we say, are somebody who look up to their beloved, the God or the Lord or the deity uh, for faith, for assurance. And in that sense, hope is a very integral part of bhakti yoga. Okay. Uh, belief is something completely, completely different. And I, uh, perhaps we can have a, another conversation on this in some other live session. Belief is a step that you need to reach the state beyond belief. Belief is a statement with which you run your life. It's a, uh, it's, it's literally um, a life understanding. So when we talk about excellence, uh, self-excellence, we can say that the process of self-excellence is basically um, creating a belief, then breaking that belief, creating another belief, breaking that belief, and gradually rising higher and higher and higher till you don't have to believe what you are. You realize what you are. Remember, we need the beliefs to reach realization. If you can destroy all the beliefs, great. But not many of us, at least not I, I'm not capable of that. Some of you may be, all the best. Uh, we need these beliefs one by one. So when you say that I am a better person today than what I was five years ago, there is a belief. You believed that you were in a certain way and now you feel you are in another way still it is a belief we need these beliefs till we reach a realization because when you realize yourself when you reach what you are as yoga says it you don't believe in something you know that time all your beliefs collapse and that's the state the highest state of Samadhi as yoga calls it. Because in the highest state of Samadhi, neither you, neither do you believe what others tell you that you are, nor you believe your own mind. You don't believe. You know. You know what you are and you have experienced what you are. And between the knowing and experiencing, you don't need any belief. If people tell you, you are like this, you're good, you're bad, doesn't matter because you know. People will put you up on a pedestal, great. People will put you down, fine. 
I want to read a beautiful poem by Kabir. What I spoke about now that I'm reminded. I will read it out to you. <clears throat> if I told you the truth about God, you might think I was an idiot. If I lied to you about the beautiful one, you might parade me through the streets shouting, this guy is a genius. This world has its pants on backwards. Most carry their values and knowledge in a jug that has a big hole in it. Thus, having a clear grasp of the situation, if I am asked anything these days, I just laugh. This is a state of mind where Kabir has realized his abundance, his excellence, and he does not entertain any beliefs about himself because he knows. So somewhere the techniques of yoga are organically creating a more liberating belief about ourselves and a time comes when you don't need the staircase of belief because you reach the home of knowing. I hope this helps. We have a five, five or six minutes more. So if you have any more questions, uh, let us know in the comment section. But if not, I would like to summarize. I'm not leaving you with a list of techniques. My point to come on live today was just to make us realize that yoga is ultimately attitudinal. Yoga is not a class. Yoga is not stretching. Yoga is not upside down. Yoga is not flexibility. Yoga is a process. Yoga is something that happens within you. You go to a studio, you go to a class, still the yoga happens within. So a time has come that we need to understand yoga as a process. The time has come that we need to start understanding yoga as an inward process. The time has come where we realize that the working of yoga is an inward working. It happens within. And therefore, the moment you know that it's an inward process that happens within, the mind needs to come inward. And this is a very, very important aspect of yoga about which we will talk some other day, the sense control and gradually not feeding into, um, feeding into a mind that is constantly moving outward. So Rona is asking effortless means it's coming by itself slowly. Yes, but Rona, effortless means I allow it to come slowly. Not it comes slowly. If you look at effortless as it coming to me slowly, then my mind is outside in. But we have to understand effortless means I will allow it to come to me slowly. That allowing the process to gradually happen, allowing yourself to open and unfold is the beauty of yoga. If we allow it to happen, there will be no more injuries. There will be no more uh, yoga injuries and all uh, the rubbish that we hear nowadays. There's such a huge conversation and debate happening about yoga injuries. If we value the fact that yoga is a process and it takes time, be patient with ourselves and have faith in the unfoldment of the process. There will be no yoga injuries. Why should there be? 
you will feel feel like a small child being driven for vacation by parents that you trust in imagine imagine if you are a child and you're going on a vacation with your parents you deeply trust your parents and you're sitting there in the back seat and you have absolutely no stress or worry about where you're going how much they are paying nothing you are just enjoying the journey for me process of yoga is like that sit back relax do your thing and enjoy the journey for me that is effortless yes rona ahimsa to ourselves it's a big big part of being effortless so lynn says the power of belief moves through us and we become a representative of love on earth our smaller selves are washed away and then yoga reveals itself through us illumination yes lynn absolutely you got it so don't be hard on yourself don't rush yourself do not encourage negative thoughts or negative self talk patanjali gives a very beautiful technique for this it's called pratipaksha bhavana it is about raising an opposite thought the moment a distracting thought comes in the mind pratipaksha bhavana you can google it or study patanjali's yoga sutra and check for prati paksha bhavana prati paksha bhavana means raising an opposite thought a liberating thought when your mind naturally impulsively produces a limiting thought beverly says it is like total acceptance and flowing with life the way it is absolutely total acceptance not because you have given up very we have to be very very clear now many people say oh total i accept that's my fate and give up no total acceptance of what i am supposed to do and total acceptance of what i am going to get from the universe or wherever it comes from so when you are clear about what you have to do and you are also simultaneously open for what's going to come towards you you go into a beautiful circle of give and take a beautiful cycle that krishna mentions in chapter 3 of kar of bhagavad gita that is the topic of karma yoga and when you start spinning in this beautiful circle of i will give a little i will receive a little i give a little i receive a little then life becomes effortless it's like flowing so i hope this helps uh quick recap we have almost um going over time but it's okay time is a big conditioning anyway and uh, at least in canada here it's friday evening so uh, party time so let's have a spiritual yogic party all right so recap number 1 excellence is being a better version of you spiritual excellence is constantly working on bettering at being yourself and this bettering at being yourself will perhaps end when you find your true self as yoga philosophy says uh, i gave a few examples of patanjali using the term swaswami and there are many many um, terms for example the the upanishad reminds us amritasya putraha means we are the children of immortality so uh, yoga talks a lot about uh, the final or the ultimate premise of being you and that is the immortal uh, infinite you as they say satyam brahmam anantam satyam gnanam anantam brahma the infinite consciousness the truth knowledge and bliss absolute so that is what yoga calls as a state of excellence and through the methodologies of yoga we gradually work through the steps 
by being patient, by understanding and knowing that yoga is a process and just being gentle with ourselves by cultivating deep faith in ourselves, the guru or the guide and the universe and the process of yoga. So I hope these tips help us all. If you have any questions, you can ask. I will stay here for a minute more. And if the conversation goes on, great. If not, I will say bye to all of you. I hope you take it easy. Um, don't be hard on yourself. Being a yogi is not a punishment. Neither being a yogi is a race. Yoga is not competition, not only in a studio or on the asana mat. Yoga is not competition. It is not about competing with yourself as well. Let your yoga be a beautiful flowing journey. Let your yoga be a natural spontaneous process wherein you are doing what you have to and you are open to receiving what receiving what comes this will help us to be relaxed and we need more relaxed people in this world especially looking at the kind of uh, chaos that is going on in the geopolitical situation in the world all right so i hope um, we all work on ourselves. I hope we all uh, learn to be a better version of ourselves uh, in a very relaxed, calm, trusting, peaceful way. Okay, so I'm going to end the global circle of yogis by chanting the Shanti Traya Mantra. Uh, we chant the Shanti thrice and uh, very peacefully shanti means peace and very peacefully we transform ourselves and we inspire everyone else so join your hands inhale Om. shanti 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 thank you